Legends, based on the acclaimed Star's original series. Every gladiator begins with a fight. Every fight ends with a life. The first free-to-play fighting game of its kind. Push your gladiators to greatness. Wield their strength in combat. And guide your stable of warriors on its rise through the ranks. Master the carnage. Build your gladiators' legends. The more you play, the bigger your reward. Fight for freedom. Play for free. Spartacus legends, kill them all. Watch previous seasons of this groundbreaking series on Stars on Demand, DVD, and Blu-ray. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. We are live for another episode of Dolls and Devs. I am Sabre of the Crag Dolls, and I am joined with Spectra. Say hi, Spectra. Hey, what's up? Sweet! And today we are showing off Spartacus Legends. Uh, and we're here with a number of people who have worked on the game. So we have Katie, the player experience manager. Hi. We also have Josh, the producer of the game. Hey, everyone. And we are joined with Dave. Hello. And David. Hello. Two of the awesome developers for Spartacus Legends. Uh, so we'll be talking about the game, some of the cool features that you can expect to see in the game, and we'll be taking questions from the chat. So if there's something that you want to know about Spartacus Legends, now is the time to ask. Um, and we know that everyone here viewing our, uh, our live stream, they're all interested in prizes. So I believe we have a number of Spartacus Legends t-shirts to give away via social media and in the chat. So the more you interact with us, the more you share our stream, share our tweets, share the Facebook event, things like that, the more chances you have to win. And before we yeah. begin, the game uh, is Spartacus Legends. So it's free to play. You can download it right now, which we all suggest that you do. So you can join us and maybe get into a game with us later on. Um, but yeah, I think we are ready to go, unless I miss something, Spectre. You think I missed anything? I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> I think we're good. So, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So let's dive right in. Uh, Katie, can you explain to us what exactly is Spartacus Legends? Yeah, so as you were saying, it's a free-to-play Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network fighting game where you take the role of a Lanista with your very own stable of elite gladiator slaves, and you basically get to take control of your gladiators in the arena and try to reach legendary fame, but you're more likely going to meet death at the hands of an opponent. Uh, the combat is very true to the Spartacus TV show. Lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of permanent death, and there are eight different fighting styles, and each is complete with their own brutal executions. Uh, the main theme of the game is kill them all because if you don't, your gladiators are probably going to die. So you want to kill everyone. So there's there's no mercy in this game. There's no I'm mercy, okay. not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> good to know. And Katie, what do you specifically do on on the uh, game? You are the player experience manager. So what does that mean? Yeah, so I'm the player experience manager. Basically, a lot of the community and content comes from me. So I'm trying to engage the players and keep them entertained with awesome content. Uh, you can find me, most, find me mostly on the website, uh, the Facebook page, and Twitter. So, Very cool. Um, and what's sort of your background? Like, did you go to school for this? Or what other titles have you worked on? Kind of what's your background uh, before working on Spartacus Legends? Right. So I went to school, like I actually had a weird start. I double majored in economics and psychology, which doesn't really go together at all. <laughs> but it made sense to me at the time. Um, and I was really into games. So I was a hardcore World of Warcraft player. I used to be in a top 20 US guild and do a lot of rating. And from there, I was like, yeah, I need to get into gaming. I want to be in this industry and I want to do this for the rest of my life, I guess. Um, it just entered, it was something I was passionate about. So from there, I decided, I needed to get work. <laughs> so in college, my last semester, I started working for an indie game studio called Chronic Logic. And from there, I went to a monetization company, then an MMO company, and worked on an MMO called Zensha. And right from there, I got a job at Ubisoft. I think I've worked on about eight titles already over here. So oh, I've worked on a lot of games. <laughs> Wait, you said eight titles 
from Ubisoft or from in general, like in your whole career? Uh, from Ubisoft alone. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, well, that's very cool. So, what is your favorite thing about Spartacus Legends? What do you really like about this game? Um, I actually am enjoying the community. I love the way they speak. So they really get into the show. They're passionate and they talk like the people from the show. So if you go to our Facebook wall, you'll see people like just yelling Jupiter's cock and like all this like, crazy <laughs> stuff. And they just get really into it and it's, it's hysterical. <laughs> so that's probably awesome. my favorite part about working on the Spider Kids game so far. That's pretty neat. And do you have yeah. any... Um, I, I get like a bunch of different responses from this question, but I like to hear what people have to say in terms of giving advice to others who want to get into the game industry. I know there's no like set path that you can take necessarily that's a surefire way to get in, but um, anything that you've learned from your experiences in working with games or just getting into the industry that you would like to pass on to other people that are looking to do what you do? Yeah, so I think the main thing I tell people is don't get discouraged. A lot of people get discouraged by thinking, oh, it's really hard to get in the game industry. I've heard it's so hard to get in. I just can't do it. But if you just believe in yourself enough and go for it, you can. Um, I know that when I did it, I just knew this is what I wanted to do, and I went for it. Even if I was underqualified for a job basically like two to three years, I would apply anyway. And that is actually what happened at Ubisoft, and I got the job. So I just think you just got to go for it. Mainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Cool. That's definitely something that you just gotta gotta take the leap. Yep. You know. Pretty much. <laughs> no, that's excellent. Well, thank you. Um, and Josh, so you're the producer of Spartacus yes. Legends. That is a heavy title. Fearless leader. Producer is <laughs> a, a big deal. So, what uh, <laughs> specifically do you do for Spartacus Legends? So I'm the producer out here at Ubisoft. Um, I work in what we have, what we call our third party group. So I work with a lot of the indie developers and external development teams that we find um, who've got good ideas or a really cool team and maybe need a, a brand to work with. So I kind of put those people together and then uh, um, help them sort of walk the game through and, and uh, you know, shape it into something really cool. So do you work on multiple titles at once? Or do, are you just kind of set on one and then you move on? So I have a team that works for me, so I have a few uh, associate producers, and there's a, another team in the third party group. So we, um, together, I have a big portfolio of games, so there's a lot of games I'm working on at any one time. Um, but there's typically one that's about to come out, which of course gets the focus. So right now, it's in my world, it's all Spartacus right now. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, the, over time, there'll be some other games that'll pop up that uh, I'll be working on next. Okay, and similar to the questions that we asked Katie, um, what's your background? Uh, did you anticipate getting into the game industry early on, so you kind of you know, went to school for certain classes that you thought would help, or did you just kind of network and meet someone in the game industry and thought that's cool? You know, how did you get in? Yeah. So I have a really weird, so I grew up on the back of a farm in Pennsylvania, so not the most high tech. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I knew I loved video games, so I was totally sold on it way early on, and uh, I got big into it, but no one ever near me knew how to make games, so I got into art, uh, I was like, I love art video games, I'll just become an artist. <laughs> And uh, so uh, <laughs> over time, I uh, developed I went to art school. school. Um, I, I went to, uh, I learned engineering, so I, I did programming for a while. Um, I've done game design. I was a creative de director previously. So I basically, over time, sort of worked in all the different roles of game development. And then that sort of led me up to eventually becoming a producer. Jeez. Wow. Do you think working in all those roles helps you do your job now better? Absolutely, yeah. So there's a a ton of different aspects, and it's really easy to, um, if you find something that like, you really love to specialize in, um, especially a company like Ubisoft, right, we've got so many people who are in this company working on really cool games that you can become very specific. Um, for me, I was more of a, I like to do all of it, and I liked, uh, I had a really good time talking with all the different teams and sort of learning as much as I could, so it made more sense for me personally in my career to be more of a sort of a generalist and, and give my hands a little bit of everything. Cool. That's What's excellent. your... Uh, yeah, what's your favorite thing about Spartacus? Uh, I really love the... Uh, so one thing that I really like about games is the uh, getting so attached to things um, and then losing them, or the risk of losing them, right? So like, I love Game of Thrones because I never know who's going to die next week. Why do I read yeah. <laughs> But anyway. Yep. <laughs> But the idea stands, right? So, like, like I loved XCOM because you, you get really attached to your, to your, um, your soldiers in there, but there's that risk of losing them. And so, so uh, the team at the Kung Fu Factory, as a team of David and those guys, did a really good job of capturing that same, uh, that same feeling. You're really, really attached to a gladiator, gladiator, and if you mess up, uh, you, know, you can lose them. So you really got to start riding on an inch bike. Oh, wow. Gotcha. 
And we are, I'm just going to say this, we, we are getting a little bit of echo. I think it's from both you guys since you guys are sitting so close and you're on different mics, but it's all good. Um, we might just have to mute maybe Katie when Josh is talking and Josh when Katie's talking or something. We'll work it out. Um, but I believe everyone in chat understood what you said, I think. <laughs> uh, <but if> not, <laughs> we'll revisit it a little bit later and we'll ask you the same questions. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's your favorite thing about Spartacus. I, I tend to agree. You get attached to people and you never know what's going to happen. And uh, I feel like this game scares me in terms of everyone is up for grabs and anyone can die. And it uh, makes me nervous. It makes me nervous in a game. But very cool. So any advice that you have for people to get into the game industry or get into a producer role like what you're doing right now? Yeah, so I think um, the producer role is sort of a, a weird role in game development. I, you know, I don't think anyone wakes up and says, I'm going to be a producer. But um, the, the stronger way to get into it and what will make you, I think, better in your career is just start making games, right? So uh, right now, everyone at home and everyone watching, you guys have the same tools available to you that we do as professional game developers. You can go download the Unity Engine or even the Unreal Engine or tons of other ones and have a game up and running on your cell phone or even in a web browser after basically a weekend of sort of running through some stuff online. Um, so my best advice is there's nothing stopping you from making games. Like you could be a game developer this weekend. Just go download stuff and uh, start making games. And uh, your first game's going to suck. Mine did. All of our games, all of our first games sucked. Uh, but you got to get them out of the way. So do it. You'll learn a lot. And then just keep doing it. Keep making more and more games. Awesome. That's, that's really, really good advice. And I, I hope more people take you up on that. You know, it's absolutely true. There's tons of things out there, free software you can download and play around with. Absolutely. Um, and Spectre, I don't know if you see that message in chat, in Skype chat, about um, T-shirt stuff. Mm -hmm. No? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so um, we are going to be giving away T-shirts. Spe uh, Spectre. Siren is hanging out in chat, and she is going to be the goddess of the t-shirts and handing them out to people who retweet our tweets about the stream and share our Facebook posts about the stream. She is going to go find you after you've tweeted, retweeted, or shared those posts, and she's going to give you t-shirts. She will find you and pick winners for t-shirts. Awesome. So be sure to do that. Share the stream. Make sure that you get a chance to win. These shirts are pretty freaking awesome. I know I saw one. Um, where was was it? Pax? I think it was Pax. Yeah, Pax where I saw. Yeah, and they look yeah. freaking awesome. So you definitely want one of these shirts. Um, and then a really quick question from the chat. I'm not sure who asked it, but they have asked who runs the Spartacus Facebook page. Uh, so that would be me. We've been really busy <laughs> with all the traffic we've been getting from the game, so we haven't been able to respond to everyone, but we're working our way to get through those responses. But yeah, I run the Facebook page. Oh, sweet. Yep. Awesome. So now you guys know. You should go and like the Facebook page and then say hi uh, to Katie and be like, I saw you on the D&D live stream. Woohoo! Tell us the devs, yeah! You know, a little shout <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> well, very cool. So to get back into some more questions about Spartacus Legends, this game is a fighting game, and it's free to play. Is that correct? It Actually, is. This is for Josh. Yeah, so Sorry, I should have directed the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so it's free to play. So one of the things that's really cool, um, uh, or I think is really cool about fighting games, is the community that plays them. And for us, we, of course, we think we made a really cool game, and we want as many people as possible to play it. So the cool thing with free to play is we can do that, right? We can put it out there, and anyone and everyone can come play it. We get a ton of people playing online. I think it'll be really fun and, and build up a really strong community of people who give it a shot and, and uh, stick around and, and play it. So um, free to play made a lot of sense for us. And, and so fortunately, like we said earlier, if, you don't already play, if you're not already playing it, uh, we'll give you like 10 seconds. Go start downloading it, and it'll be done by the time the stream is over so you can go play it. Sweet. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Dave or David, one of you guys, who wants to go first? I'll go first. All right. So can you tell us what your title is and what your involvement with the game is? Sure. So I'm the producer over here at Kung Fu Factory. Um, we're the developer on Spartacus Legends. And my involvement is I'm the professional cat herder here. What that means is that I coordinate all the different teams. So I work with uh, design, I work with engineering, and I also coordinate with Josh and um, getting everything together and out to you guys. 
No, right on. All right, and then uh, David, what about you? Hi, I'm David. I'm the lead combat designer on Spartacus Legends, so I handle all the very detailed stuff about how long a move should be, what the recovery is on it. I also did like all the stats on the items as well as perks, everything that is in the game that related to like that gameplay stuff. That's, that was all me. Cool. So you're a big combat guy. Did you have to do a lot of research on actual combat? Um, yes. Uh, I would say my research came around like um, 2008, 2009 when um, Street Fighter 4 had just come out. I did nothing but nonstop play that game. <laughs> I was telling people that was my grad school. Um, I just <laughs> went to tournaments all the time and I learned so much about fighting games during that time. Um, pretty wow. much everything stuck with some sense. So yeah. In terms of yeah. research, that sounds... Pretty awesome. No, I've heard some horror stories about research, but that seems pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was very about, painful, what, though. It lost a lot of matches. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about real life combat? Did you do any like real life like research? I personally do do not, um, but we do have a lot of guys on the team who are um, very combat focused, MMA, karate, jujitsu. Um, the studio has a big background in. Um, MMA fighting games, so um, yeah, we have a yeah. lot of people here who are very well versed in, you know, just how the body moves and, you know, best ways to interact and where to, where to hit a person to make it hurt the most, basically. Dang. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> well, neat. So, we're going to ask you both some of the same questions um, that we asked Josh and Katie. So, Dave, uh, what's your background? Did you go to school for this, and what are some of the previous titles that you worked on maybe before you joined? Um, I don't want to mess it up, but you said it was Kung Fu... Kung Fu Factory. Kung Fu Factory. I knew it was a cool word, and I couldn't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, actually, I didn't know that I was going to be in games. Um, when I was younger, I really I played a lot of music, so I thought I was going to be in the next uh, Rolling Stones or 311. Unfortunately, <laughs> things didn't really pan out for me that much, and I started testing video games over at Activision. That was a little over 10, 11 years ago, and fortunately it was a lot more stable of a career than playing music was in LA. And, you know, I've just been working in the video game industry since then. It was something that I, you know, was very passionate about as a hobby when I was a kid. And when I realized that I could make a career out of it, I decided to really get into it some more, and, you know, I haven't really looked back since. Awesome. Well, that's cool. I'm sorry the music career didn't pan out, but I'm glad that you're here talking to us about video games. You know, that's that's a win-win, I think, for the most part. Um, and then, David, what what's your background? I mean, did you go to school for coding and, and development? I did not go to school for video games at all. Um, I studied sociology and Japanese in college. Sweet. Um, <laughs> so everyone always asks me, um, you know, how, how did you get into the game industry? Um, what I would tell people is it's always good to, you know, go in, learn tools like Unity, um, programming languages, scripting languages. It's always good to have that background. I did three years of programming in high school, and I still use every little bit that I remember from that, you know, in my day-to-day -day work at a, at a game studio. Um, but at the same time, you know, just play games, analyze them in a, in a deep way, you know. Whenever, whenever you see a new game, um, kind of think about, you know, what it makes you feel and why it makes you feel that way. It's always, it's always not necessarily as simple as just, you know, seeing a bunch of gore on screen or just, um, you know, there's a lot of very obvious things, but then there's a lot of not so obvious things and just kind of getting into the root of why a game functions the way it does. Um, that's my best advice, I would say, to people. Did you have to train yourself to do that? Because you're not the first person I've heard say, you know, you should sit down after you play a game or after you play a certain part of a game and it affects you, you should sit down and think, why did it affect me that way? Or what do I think about this? What are the pros? What are the cons? What do I like? What don't I like about this? Did you have to like do exercises like that? Um, I would say, for me, a lot of like the training came in college because you know even though I studied sociology, and that has nothing to do with games. At the same time, you know, I I was kind of taught to like read something and just think about it in a critical manner. So just um, really sort of digesting and sort of. Um, you know, thinking about different permutations, thinking about how different systems work together, and that's really all game development is, is a bunch of, like, little systems, like, working together to make a, you know, bigger experience for someone. So, um, 
yeah, it's just it's just a lot of practice, a lot of thinking. Um, it's good to have other people to bounce ideas off of, and just uh, uh, you know, you know, just constantly uh, going over this stuff in your head. Definitely. Well, very cool. Um, and then, Dave, what advice would you give to someone who wanted to leave their music potential career and become a producer and developer? You know, um, I think. Josh and David have already covered the, uh, the tools part of it and doing game research. I think the other thing that, you know, isn't really, and somebody might have mentioned it too, but I think, you know, if, if you see an opening in the game industry, regardless of where it's at, as being an intern or starting as a QA tester, I mean, I think that you should really um, go ahead and try to pursue a career in it, even if you think it's something that is not necessarily stable. Um, I was in the same boat, and I've had several friends who have started in, um, you know, with a certain degree of uncertainty, in, uh, sorry, with uncertainty in the industry, and, I mean, it, things have worked out for them. So, uh, you know, I think part of it, too, is just making that jump into working in video games and then, you know, applying yourself, um, you know, doing as much as you can. Uh, you know, for certain big companies, I think it's a little bit harder to start on the ground floor, but I mean, if you have an opportunity, you know, reach out to developers, maybe they have an opening for somebody in the uh, intern department. And I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, sometimes you have to get over your fear and just go ahead and do it. That's true. I think that's, that's very good advice. So if you're sitting out there and you're watching the stream and you're like, I want to get in the game industry and I don't know what to do, just apply. Apply to whatever you find, you know, and just make it so that if you or you know if you, I think people if they look at an open job description that they, sometimes they have like a list of skill sets you know and if you know that you're weak on some things you know practice those and, and get in there but just try I think is a is a really good thing to do so that's awesome um, so for both of you guys Dave and David um, what are your favorite things or what is your favorite thing about Spartacus is there something in particular that really stands out to you about this game that you, that you really enjoy and you think is your favorite part uh, for me, like, I think I've never seen a fighting game kind of combine RPG elements the way we've done, um, you know, with, with the fighting game uh, engine. So that to me is, you know, very unique and something that we were trying to do to do differently. You know, we didn't really want to compete with Street Fighter or Tekken. Like, those games are great. Those games are in their own league. And, you know, if you're looking for that experience, that's definitely there. But I think we were kind of looking for more of a, you know, what, what, what does it feel like when we combine all these other elements from all these other games that we also enjoy playing and put them into a fighting game engine. And I think that's probably the most exciting thing to me about the game. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, my favorite thing is that I never lose a match, ever. Sweet. <laughs> that's it. No. <laughs> actually, my favorite thing about the game is that I'm, I'm actually very terrible at fighting games. Um, I, you know, I've played Street Fighter for years. I mean, I, I certainly played it when it first came out on the arcade. Um, and I ha haven't gotten any better in over 15 years of playing fighting games. The good thing about this game is that uh, since it's so easy to pick up and play, I go ahead and try different things. Um, I mean, I really like unarmed combat. I mean, I find that I tend to gravitate towards dagger, dagger. And th that's the good thing is, you know, for somebody who's a butt masher like me and for somebody who has a hard time remembering combos, it's, you know, the degree in which you can pick up the game and learn how to play it is, is good for somebody, you know, who's uh, very good at basics like me. Um, but the other aspect of it, too, is that there's so many different types of fighting styles that I can, even, even if I get a little bit tired of losing in, um, in one certain way or lose a gladiator, then I can always go ahead and try out something different. Um, and to me, that's, you know, that's what always keeps it exciting, just the fact that I can switch it around whenever I want. Yeah, that's cool. I can definitely relate to that. I'm total button masher when it comes to fighting games. However, I do go and learn at least two combos. <laughs> that I just do over and over again, and then when those stop working, I start bush button mashing. <laughs> <laughs> so all our viewers know how to beat Spectra in a, in a fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, cool. And for both of you guys, is it hard developing a fighting game? Like, are there certain aspects that are just really tough? Yes. In general? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I would say that the hardest, hardest thing about developing a fighting game is the experience has to be fun for both players. Um, I think in a typical, you know, brawler or beat em up you know, you can add as many flashy combos as you want, you know, 100 hitters, um, add a bunch of, you know, crazy animations that look super cool. But um, in a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, um, you know, both players have to be having fun. Even when you're getting your butt kicked, you should feel like, 
um, you still have a chance. You're still able to get back up and get back into it. So kind of balancing making a player feel good for being good at it, but not making a player feel so bad for being, you know, not the best at it is, is kind of the difficult part. Definitely. I can see that it'd be tough to, to code for and figure out. Well, awesome. So what else can we ask you guys? Oh, so this is actually also for Dave and David. Um, what inspired you guys to create this game? Like why, why Spartacus? as a fighting game versus something else. Well, if you guys think about it, arena combat, you know, in the Roman times, that was the original fighting game. Um, people would actually, uh, all like the Romans in the way them, that they set up their, their gladiator matches, like they actually had gladiator types, which was like, you know, trident type and dual sword type, which I think was called like Daimakiri. Um, and they would have like their own matchups in the arena. So certain types would be considered stronger against other types. And um, they would pair them up, and, you know, that was their fighting game. So we thought, you know, what, what a perfect combination to sort of bring that back and put it into, you know, a modern-day fighting game. And, um, you know, put, it, put the uh, Spartacus uh, wrapper on top of that, which is, you know, really bloody, really gory, and just a lot of fun. True. And I'm, I'm sure um, being somewhat associated with the, with the TV show would also help in terms of just getting people excited about the game and getting... Spartacus lovers of the TV show to come play the game and things like that. So that's kind of yeah, good, a good add-on too. The show is definitely a great inspiration. You know, every all the combat in there is really, you know, at times can be a little cheesy, but at the same time, it has sort of that comic book feel to it, which I think a lot of um, you know video game players sort of uh, gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. So you know, we we definitely enjoyed making and think of thinking of like super brutal finishers. You know, like. How can we, I think, you know, the, the people making the show at every episode, they were thinking, how can we top the last episode? How can we create a gruesome finisher that, you know, no one could ever, you know, think of? And, you know, they always, in the show, they always proved us, they always showed us something new. So we were kind of, that was sort of our internal challenge is also, you know, how can we top the show? How can we go further than, you know, they couldn't have? So, yeah, that was, that was fun. How involved are the like the creators of the show in the development of this game? Um, they definitely gave a lot of feedback. Uh, I didn't personally get to talk with them, but I know um, Liam McIntyre of Spartacus from the show um, got to play an early build, and he sent us cool. a bunch of um, uh, feedback. He actually worked at, to work at GameStop. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> awesome. So he's like a hardcore gamer, and he sent wow. us feedback back that you know i was not expecting to hear at all he was asking us very detailed questions about the game um the combat engine it's like why aren't we um including high low blocking or why is the frame data so um you know off on like this move and that and i was like whoa i'm not <laughs> expecting to hear that from wow. the star of the show but it was it was really wow. cool yeah hearing that stuff from from the talent so i knew that you know in some ways, we were also developing the game for Liam McIntyre, Spartacus himself, because we wanted to make him proud. And, you know, when he plays a game that he felt like not only is this his game because, you know, he started in the show, but it's also he helped, you know, make a portion of it. And he feels satisfied with the experience. Wow, that's very cool. I had no idea. I always <laughs> love finding out, like, celebrities or closet gamers and <laughs> some not so closeted, but it's fantastic. That's great to hear. <laughs> So Liam's actually really bummed right now because he's on location filming in some remote location. Um, yeah. And he was so bummed because he was going to miss the release. Like, he's ready and waiting to play it. He actually took his Xbox with him on location because he's ready to play the game as soon as he can get into it. <laughs> yeah. So he's, you know, I, I sort of picture him in his remote trailer with his, his Xbox set up somewhere. So he's, he's, he's the oh real deal. He's, he's a big gamer. That's so right on. Awesome. That is so... So Josh... Um, what can, can you give us a kind of a rundown as far as like the game modes that we've got in this game? What can uh, gamers expect? Yeah, so one thing that I, I really like is the idea that there's no distinct game modes. Um, so a lot of fighting games, you spend a lot of time sort of in the menus, driving through options and stuff. Uh, what the team of Kung Fu did here, which is really cool, is there's basically just what we call Legends mode, right? So everything that you're doing in the game takes place in this sort of one... Um, space, which what that means for the player is your online games, your offline games, everything you do is on the same progression, the same profile basically. Um, so it's up to you how you want to play. So the cool thing is as a player, if you love online games, like there's some people who just love fighting online. They don't want to play against the AI, they just have no interest. 
So you can totally do that in this game. You can progress through the entire game and do everything and, and get all the items and level all the way up just playing online matches. On the flip side, if you hate playing online because you're terrible like Dave, then you can <laughs> play single player the whole way through and you don't even have to fight online matches. And there's, of course, we see most players are doing a blend where they play a little bit of both. And it carries over, right? So whatever you do in offline, you can take that same character and play online and vice versa, right? Exactly. Okay. Cool. How many levels are there? Like you said, maxing it out, like where, what can you max out? Yeah, so we launched with, uh, there's 50 levels in the game, um, and there's a ton of content. There's, there's so much, uh, so many weapons and armor that you can get and really customize your, your gladiators. Um, so there's, there's just a ton of stuff there for players to get, and uh, we're excited to watch people sort of climb through it and see how far they get. Very cool. And so this is, uh, this fighting game has uh, elements of RPG, right? How does that, how does that work? Can you explain that a bit? Yeah, David, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, well, a lot of people have different uh, definitions of RPG, so I'll, I'll probably define that first, just because um, when I think of RPG, I just think of like kind of a progression structure and just getting stronger over time, getting better, better gear, cooler looking gear. So, you know, from that definition of RPG, you know, our game sort of has that system where you, as a Lanista, level up over time. So you gain uh, our experience points is what we call fame in the game. And at the end of a fight, you gain fame um, and you're able to level up. And the higher that you level up, the better access you have to better gear. And the gear will give you stats like health points, defense points. And it starts to get more interesting, you know, as you level up. So we'll start combining certain things, but also taking away certain things. So um, we're kind of getting into like a min-maxing sort of uh, scenario where it's like, do you want to pump everything into health and sort of, uh, you know, sacrifice a little bit of damage? Or do you want to do the opposite? Are you really into rolling in the game? If you do, maybe you want to up your roll speed, but you might not have the defense that you used to. Um, so th that, those are the types of decisions that we wanted to create for players to sort of have, be able to create a build um, the same way you do in like, you know, World of Warcraft or Diablo, you know, that you're always picking new abilities or, but having to, you know, think about that and, and sort yeah. of plan ahead of time. That's actually a really cool. nice aspect because I know when I played fighting games, um, it was nice to have like the set character that did its own moves and, and what have you, but like there was no way to change that. Like you were stuck with whatever that character did, you know, and I kind of like that in this game, you're able to say, well, I can increase the speed here, but I'll sacrifice this, but it's ultimately your decision to make, which is really cool. I don't think I've seen that ever in a fighting game, to my knowledge. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah. That's neat. So you can totally customize your character so that it is like a unique character that you can take online and play other people? Yep, it's all up to like your, you know, personal playing style so um, I know personally I, I go kind of for like a glass cannon build so I don't care about um, defense that much at all or health at all but I'll pump everything into um, attack speed and damage and just kind of go you know as hard and as fast as I can at my opponent and if I die you know you know that's I'll get into the next fight even faster than if I turtle so. <laughs> true that right. so I am gonna uh, put a pause to our questions really quickly for our guests and call out some of the winners from Twitter, each person that we call out is going to get a prize of a t-shirt, a Spartacus Legends t-shirt. I wish I had one here so I could show it to you guys, uh, but it's very cool. Um, so, <laughs> let me see. We have the first winner from Twitter is Randall Sims. Randall Sims. If that is your Twitter handle, you win a t-shirt. So we will be contacting you uh, to send you that. And we also have our second winner from Twitter, and I I don't know really how to pronounce this, but we're going to try. I think it's Lori Soul. Lori Soul. L-O-R-I-S-O-U-L-E. Uh, Siren actually just put it in chat, so if that's your Twitter handle, congratulations! You Yay. have won a <laughs> good Legends t-shirt. And we'll have more to give away uh, as, the, as our live stream continues, so be sure to stay uh, active with us, uh, put questions in chat, and retweet. Um, the tweets that we send out and share the Facebook posts and there's just tons of ways to win so you should do all of them and then you uh, up your chances for winning super awesome t-shirt so we have right, those and, and then gotta... oh sorry go ahead oh no I think you're gonna say the same thing I was gonna say we have a yep. question from chat 
We do. We have a question from chat, and um, they're asking, what is the max rating or rank that you can get in Spartacans Legends? So the max fame rank you can get is 50 right now. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of gladiator rating, uh, that, I believe the max was topping out around 500. Okay. So once you add up all the gear, all the different perks, everything you can get in the game and put into a single gladiator build, um, players should be reaching anywhere between four and 500 as, as a sort of top end, high level player. All right, so what happens if you're, like you've customized your character, you know, you've been playing it, you've been winning, what happens when you lose? To your, that, does it, I mean, yeah, I know, do your character <laughs> dies, but does, does that affect you know, your character in game anyway? Like, do you lose points? Do you lose skill level? Like, how does it affect your character? Is there, like, cause a loss of some sort? You lose your gladiator for sure. So um, with the gladiator comes gladiator specific, um, uh, what's, what do you call it, abilities and traits. So all the perks that come with the gladiator, you'll lose when, when the gladiator dies. Okay. And the gladiators themselves also have a um, sort of tier to them, which uh, you can tell by the, the name, the color on the name. So, um, you know, the more expensive gladiators have better stats, better starting stats. So if you lose a gladiator, you'll lose those starting stats and sort of that extra edge that you might get otherwise. Um, other than that, like your gear and um, your fame rank all stay level. You know, we talked about that early on, um, yeah. whether you should lose the, the gear or whether the gear should be tied to a specific uh, uh, a gladiator or not. But ultimately, we decided it would be too much of a hassle for a player to have to sort of start from scratch every time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, yeah. those are sort of your one constant thing that's always growing with you is your stable of, of your stash of gear um, and your okay. fame rank, your ability to buy um, gear at that level. All right. Wow, man. So you don't want to lose. <laughs> want to make sure you win. That's very <laughs> cool. <laughs> So we have another question from chat, um, and this person asks, whom on the Spartacus Legends team has worked on Mortal Kombat titles, or had worked on Mortal Kombat titles? I think this is for Dave. Yeah, so um, we have actually a couple of people who, uh, will, rename, who will remain nameless, but um, our lead programmer has worked on Mortal Kombat. We have a couple of wow. veterans too who have, you know, who have done you know, tons of work on previous KFF titles like that. Um, you know, I mean, so there's, there's definitely a lot of experience going into this game, um, a lot of heart, too. I know everybody talks about it, but, I mean, there are definitely a lot of people here who, who really love what they do, and I think that it's shown in the game that we've made. Totally. Very cool. All right, we've got another uh, question from chat. Is there going to be an update to the story, like new cities, or, you know, how are you guys going to update this so there's new so right stuff for players? Oh, sorry. So right now, um, we've got the uh, the six districts that are in there right now. Uh, there's actually a ton of content. We've seen that there's a lot of stuff for players to do. Um, we are going to be continuing to update and release new content and new features um, to the game as time goes on. Um, so like I was talking about earlier, I think we're going to have a really big community with this. There's going to be uh, super excited for new stuff. Um, and we've got the guys there who are working on some cool stuff right now um, that we'll be rolling out uh, coming up soon. Okay, right on. What platforms is this uh, game available on? Uh, so you can download today on uh, Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network for your uh, PS3 and Xbox 360. All right. Is there any plans to put it uh, to put it on PC or Steam or anything like that? So uh, we'll definitely. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have an open mind. Uh, right now we're focused on the consoles. I think that's where it's the strongest, and I think it's going to uh, do really well, um, especially when we look at where do people play fighting games. I think consoles make the most sense. Um, yeah. If we see a big demand, though, uh, it's certainly not out of that question. Cool. Right. Awesome. Um, and there's no difference in the games from Xbox to PlayStation, right? It's pretty much the same. There's nothing different in the different ones. Yeah, right. same game. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so, Josh, how how does this game, Spartacus Legends, tie into the TV show, or does it at all? So it's it's set in the world, obviously, right? So we've got a, a lot of familiar faces. You'll see if you're a fan of the show, you'll see a lot of those those people in here. Um, you know, you'll be going up and fighting against Spar obviously Spartacus, right? <laughs> of course, he's in the game. Um, 
It's, uh, it's all taking place in Capua. It's not tied directly to the storyline. It's more about the player's sort of involvement in the world, right? So you don't actually play as a gladiator. You play as sort of the, you know, you're the Lanista, right? So you sort of oversee your, your house of gladiators. Um, so, you know, you're not taking the role of someone specific. You, you just sort of are your own person in this world. Um, so the cool thing is the way that we work with the, the guys at the show, um, they've been involved from the start, and, and they've been giving us a lot of great reference. You'll see a lot of those, the sets and the places that you're going to play in the game. You'll recognize from the show because we actually um, took the blueprints for that the set builders used on the show, and uh, the artists at Kung Fu Factory used those to build the in-game levels. So, I, I mean, we went back and forth to the point where we were, like, debating the kind of bricks that were used and, like, the way the light bounces up. Like, the set designers were super into making the game match exactly what they did in the show. Oh, crazy. That's really cool to hear, though. Yeah, it was fun. It's great because we, I mean, a lot of times we're creating just sort of this, our own stuff and there's not a, a great reference point. Here, they had done a lot of the work, right? So we've got this really cool uh, effects in the game that sort of match the hard work that they put into developing for the show. And I think, it, I think it feels like the show. I mean, I've seen a lot of people who play the game and you can pretty much instantly tell that it's, that it's taken from the Spartacus show. Sweet. Um, and we're going to switch gears really quickly to take uh, a question from the chat. So I believe, let me just make sure, this is for Dave. Dave, how does this game compare to the Smash Brothers uh, game? Well, I think I'll take that one, David. Or David, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's a really interesting question. Like, on the, on, the, on the surface, it looks like they have nothing in common. Like Smash Brothers and Spartacus Legends. <laughs> I would say like, yeah. the closest thing they have in common is that both are fighting games that don't have a um, high-low blocking system. That's something that you yeah. you find in any um, you know 3D or 2D fighting game. You know you have either high attacks, low attacks, uh, ways to break um, block that way. But um, both in Spartacus Legends and um, in Smash Brothers, you you have kind of um, sort of a blocking circle. Um, you know, in Smash Brothers, there's a blocking circle, but in um, Spartacus, we have the defense meter, and sort of over time, you know, that will shrink and sort of uh, give you, uh, make you more vulnerable to those attacks. So, uh -huh. I would say like that's that's the closest similarity I can find between the two. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes it even harder. <laughs> 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 but I'm horrible at at the Smash Brothers game, so I think the little I played of, of Spartacus Legends, I like it, but it's a very hard game for me, so uh, so it's cool. It's interesting to make that comparison. But man, making it difficult. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Josh, let's go back to the show really quickly and talk about um, some of the comparisons with the game and the show. So are you able to play as some of your favorite characters from the show? You are. So the way it works right now is we have the legends that you're fighting against, right? So these are the guys like Spartacus, Crixus, and Animaeus, the guys from the show that you'll, you'll all recognize. Um, the way it's set up is there the each of the legends when you fight and beat them you actually can go into the 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 uh, slave market I don't think you call it on the game anymore but you essentially go into the slave market to buy your new slaves that you're sort of turning into gladiators here um, once you've defeated a legend you could actually have a chance to go essentially hire or buy Spartacus to come fight for your lose. Hmm. Jeez. So what about the fights? You're able to reenact some of your favorite fight scenes from the show, perhaps in the game. Yeah, so like we were talking about earlier, all the arenas are there, so all the settings are in there, um, and you'll see a lot of your, your favorite gladiators. Uh, we're also working, uh, you know, the team is working now to add more and more gladiators over time, um, so you'll mm. probably see some more of your, uh, the fan favorites showing up in the game uh, that we'll release uh, as free updates uh, once, we, once we go on. That should answer some of the questions we're seeing in chat now about adding additional gladiators and stuff and new stuff that comes up in the show. Um, will be reflected in, in the game. So keep your eyes peeled, guys, for updates. To, uh, yeah, and if there's, if there's a gladiator or if there's someone from the show that you really love and you want to see in the game, come tell us about it on Facebook page uh, or on uh, Twitter. Um, we're definitely looking for it. The guys that we have in there now and the ones that we're adding are because they're fan favorites. So uh, whatever you guys want to see, let us know. So there you go. Direct cool. line to yeah. creators. You, you, you guys can have an effect on this game. Whatever you want to see, <laughs> just let them know, and maybe they'll put it in. So it's very cool. Very, very cool. Um, so this is a question for all of you guys, and I guess we'll just go in order. We'll go with Katie, and then Josh, and then Dave and David. Um, so what's your favorite saying from the show? 
Um, I think my favorite thing would have to be by Gannicus, because I love Gannicus. But uh, what he said was, there's only one way to become a champion, and that's never to fucking lose. And I just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so true. Right <laughs> true. <laughs> Josh, what about you? Uh, there's a lot of good lines from the show, but my favorite actually came from our community. Like Katie was talking, the community sort of talks in the, the, the way they talk in the show. Which, by the way, was really funny because all of the... So when we're making games, right, all the text in the game goes through our sort of copy editing and legal and all that stuff. And I can't tell you how many people came back and told me that the grammar is all wrong in the game. <laughs> like, try to <laughs> auto-correct this stuff. Um, but they talk really interesting in shows. So my favorite quote actually comes from the, uh, our community. And when we released the game, uh, one of the top-rated comments on the Facebook was set films to fucking purpose, <laughs> which I just love. Oh, awesome. yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Dave, what about you? Uh, for me, it's Crixus. Um, there's no greater thing than standing victorious in the arena. Um, for me, it's a personal favorite because since I constantly lose, whenever I win, it seems like a miracle. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it makes me feel really excited. And, I mean, the, the thing for me is, there, you know, there's a whole visual aspect to blood going everywhere, the crowd cheering, and, you know, cutting off limbs. I like it a lot, especially when it's not my limbs that are getting cut off. <laughs> Very, very neat. Um, and then, David, what about you? Uh, on this end, it's not really a phrase from this show, but, um, you know, we were developing it during um, the Spartacus Vengeance when that was airing. And this, the joke around the office was, um, you know, Crixus was always screaming Navia all the time. Navia! <laughs> it's like every other episode, you know, he was just... Um, <laughs> He's just so incredibly focused on, like, finding her. So that, that, that's probably the most memorable line to me. Awesome. Awesome. And, Josh, we have a question from chat for you. Um, they are asking uh, when the game will be released on the PS3 in Europe. Yeah, so we don't have a date set right now. Um, all I can tell you guys is that we're working constantly with, uh, with Sony to get to you guys as soon as we can. Uh, I, I was actually on a call with them just before uh, I came onto this, this stream. So uh, we're working to get it there. Uh, we know you guys want it, and we want you to have it as soon as you can play it. Um, so we'll, we'll get it there for you guys as soon as we can. Sweet. There you go. So just stay tuned for that. And then to ask you guys all another question, we said your favorite saying, so what, what's your favorite character? And it might be the same character that said uh, your favorite saying, but <laughs> what are your favorite characters? Katie, you start. Um, I would have to say Spartacus, because, I mean, have you seen him? <laughs> uh, he's definitely my favorite, I think. Fair uh, enough. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, what about you? I think I'm supposed to say one of the girls from the new season, but I actually really like Atticus. <laughs> I'm not right to say that. Uh, I, I liked uh, I liked the prequel season right from the show where they focused on Gannicus, and he became one of my favorites. Nice. Dave? Um, for me, it would probably have to be, I don't know, that's a hard one. I mean, I, I want to say Spartacus just because the acting is top-notch in the show, but I mean, really, you know, without really sounding like a, like a fanboy, I mean, the thing for me is that it's, you know, the Spartacus character is just very, um, very deep. Um, you know, there's a whole progression from, you know, starting as a slave to being the top gladiator that, that I find appealing. Um, so, I mean, for me, I'm going to have to go with Spartacus. Excellent. All right, David, what about you? It says a uh, favorite character. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Probably Crixus for me, um, just because he was there, you know, from the very beginning. Um, he got to see his character grow so much, so I really enjoyed watching, watching him um, sort of come into his own. Very cool. Well, see, I, I probably shouldn't uh, admit this, but I haven't seen much of the show. <laughs> So, talking to you guys about your favorite sayings and your favorite characters, I totally want to watch it now. And then play this game and see all my favorite characters in the game. So, I'm kind of itching to do that. I kind of wish I were playing it right now. But, uh, but so, to continue on with the questions, um, I think we have, we have one from chat. Uh, and someone is asking um, when they should expect an update to resolve well-known bugs and issues in the game. Josh, is this one for you? Yeah, so um, the team, uh, you know, the cool thing about running these games, and especially the free-to-play games, is you don't ship the game and stop. Um, the guys, uh, you know, Dave and David, are taking time out of their day. They're still working on the updates that we're going to be releasing to you guys. So we're going to keep working on it and keep releasing stuff, uh, basically, as long as there's an, an interest, right? As long as you guys keep playing the game, we'll keep making stuff for you. Um, 
the specifically the the updates that came out. So um, for some of the, the eager fans who jumped into the PlayStation um, build early. Um, there was a PlayStation maintenance today on PlayStation Network, and Sony actually had some problems with the version of the build they put up. Um, so if you did, if you are experiencing a lot of bugs on Sony, uh, we actually had them, they've corrected it since then, and the correct version is up there for everyone. So if, if you're getting some problems, uh, if you can't buy Gladiators, or if you're seeing some weird stuff in online matches, the uh, best thing, unfortunately, is to delete the game and re-download it, which will mm. fix a lot of that. Um, and then, of course, we're constantly watching you guys' uh, reports and reading the forums, and and all the, the social media channels to see, um, you know, what you guys are uh, experiencing, the bugs that you're seeing, and thank you guys for calling in customer support when you see stuff. Uh, we'll be fixing all that stuff uh, as soon as we can. Awesome. Well, good. Good to know. Um, and then I believe someone else in chat has asked a question that David will answer. Um, so they'd like to know uh, if the max rating will be raised. Like we said, it's 400, 500 max, but surely this will be raised in the future. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, there's always a possibility that we can, you know, continue rating the rating of the uh, the gladiators. It's all based off of, uh, you know, that gladiator specific uh, uh, stats and gear. So as we add more powerful gear into the game, and you know, as the community continues to play the game, and sort of, um, you know, people reach max level and they're looking for more content, there's always that possibility that we'll we'll be raising the the cap on on the rating. Awesome, good to know. Um, and Dave, so what? What is the biggest challenge you faced making this game? Well, um, for me, it's you know it's definitely um, coordinating everything with a lot of people. I mean, there are definitely a lot of moving parts, not just internally, but also but also with Ubisoft. You know, coordinating things with Josh and the, his rest or the rest of his team over at Ubisoft. Um, but I think for me and with any other producer, it really is a matter of balancing everything out. You know, like. Um, what features do we put into the game? Um, you know, how do we effectively show everything to people, not just through fighting styles, but also through the UI? So, you know, I think for me, it's, uh, you know, as well as with any other producer, it's just, uh, you know, the most difficult thing is juggling um, 20 different things at once. But I find that working with um, seasoned developers who are all very much invested in the game helps out a lot. So my work is really made a lot easier by the fact that everybody wants to do a great job um, you know, we all want to come out with a game that's really fun, so that really helps out a lot and makes all the difficult things better. Awesome. Um, and then, were there? Did anyone else on the team have any uh, big challenges to overcome in making this game? Anyone who wants to share stories or or something about that? Because um, I know big things happen, and sometimes it's like a real success story once you like overcome something. I don't know if there's anything technically, David, that you could talk about, or uh, from the Ubisoft side, Katie or Josh. Um, anything that was just challenging or tough in working with this game and, and bringing it to us? Um, well, I think t you want to go ahead, Josh? I'll, say, I'll, I'll let David think a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, The only one that comes to mind, I didn't actually work on this feature, but I know um, our rendering guy um, had you know, a real tough time getting the uh, 3D blood into the game. Mm -hmm. That's something that we spent a lot of time on, and um, you know, we really wanted to do the show justice. We didn't want to just have um, particle-based blood in the game, so we were trying to balance, you know, you know, all the different things that come with working on both platforms and getting um, getting the three D blood to work, and within the constraints of you know XBLA file sizes and just a bunch of stuff. And that's not the most interesting story, but in the office, there was a lot of. Um, uh, you know, sigh of relief when that happened, when we said, oh, wow, we, we can actually do this and we'll, we'll be able to get into the game, so. Well, that's good. I'm glad you guys were able to make it work, too. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and then, Josh, I don't know if you wanted to share anything that was tough, or maybe something that was just really cool that happened that you didn't think perhaps would you be able to get, but then it finally worked out in the end. Anything like that? <laughs> So there's my, my favorite one, which just stands out right now, is that so when the fights end, there's this sort of cool thing where both gladiators sort of slide in from the side, and it does the fight results. Uh, as the, these guys are working on it, at one point we got a build where the sort of weapons were just sort of randomly sticking in and out of their head. There'd be like a sword in their head, and they'd come sliding up halfway at the screen. And, uh, you know, those are sort of the bugs that, that just happen throughout development. So the cool thing is we get to see some of those sometimes. And... Uh, they're pretty fun. I don't know if you guys ever kung fu. Uh, that we used to keep uh, most of my projects. will keep a a folder on somebody's computer of just like crazy screenshots of things that happen throughout the development because <laughs> stuff looks really weird as we're working on it. 
That's hilarious. I love hearing stories about that because you yeah. know, like code is all intertwined, and like you'll change something in this file or this line of code, and it'll affect something completely different somewhere else. Um, so I think it's always fun to see how code reacts and how it just uh, messes up sometimes, and how it's the fun. The best to part is when there's like a very easy fix that someone just doesn't have the time to get to. So for the longest time, you'll see something really weird, like something what Josh was seeing, and then you know, because they're they're totally busy working on something that is very you know difficult to get in and then you know finally someone will bring it up it's like oh yeah that's like a two-line fix and you know they'll go in and it's like completely fixed completely done and it's like why didn't you do that earlier it's like oh i knew it was <laughs> i knew it was a two-line fix so i didn't do it until now that's funny that's you guys a should put together a gag reel you know with like <laughs> a montage or something with all of the funny screen grabs that you have from Stuff like that. That would be cool. <laughs> be People awesome. would probably love to see it. Yeah. So, I um, like that. <laughs> so, Katie, how do you communicate with Spartacus fans? Where where can fans of the game and fans of the show learn about the game? Where can we talk yeah. to you guys? So, I think the main place that you can talk to us is on the website. We'll be communicating mainly there, but we also will be filtering that out through Facebook, Twitter, and the forums, but the website is the main spot. I think this week we'll actually be releasing some of the combos, so you can go check out what fight styles you want to look at for the combos on the forums, um, and we'll have guides up there soon, so we have a lot of stuff coming up on the website. Oh, neat. So, stay tuned for that. Um, and... Just to, to go back a little bit and talk about, um, I guess, working with the people on the show in terms of coming up with the game and developing the game and things like that, um, Josh and, and Dave and David, were you guys able to work with any of the actors or producers from the show? I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, but in case viewers are just joining us, um, we're, we're talking about working with the people from STARS, working with uh, the actors and producers from the show, things like that. Do you guys have any stories about working with them and how interactive they've been? Uh, if you've had any any sort of feedback with them, things like that. Uh, well, one of the cool things is we did um, get to work with one of the writers of the show. Really? Uh, yeah, so, you know, we sent them sort of, you know, an idea of how, what we had for the text in the game, sort of like, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, loading screens have, you know, some really cool stuff in them. Um, and we would run it by her, and she would say, oh, this is this is awful, this is not like Spartacus at all. And she would go in and, like, rewrite it and give us feedback. And um, so that was really cool because, you know, that show is very much about the writing. Um, everything in there, all the writing has so much flair and so much personality to it. So getting that right was um, was definitely something that we would we needed stars to help for. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and I know we talked a little bit earlier about the main actor who was able to play an early build of the game and gave some feedback for that. That was really cool. Um, and then, Josh, you were talking earlier about working with, was it the set design people with lighting? Um, if you want to retell that story if for people who maybe are just joining the stream uh, and how cool it is to work with people on the show with the with the game and things like that, I would like to rehear the story. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> was that for Josh? Oh, I think he's muted. I see him talking, but I can't. Oh, okay. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> no <laughs> problem. Myself. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the set design guys are great to work with, right? So we actually, they gave us the blueprints of the sets they build and, and the team at Kung Fu actually built the arenas based on that. So um, very familiar and, and, and super detailed down to the point of, uh, you know, there's always feedback going back and forth. And of, of course, everything that we did in the game, we worked with stars. So they were with, with us every step of the way to make sure that we were, you know, true to the, the show and the, the world that they've created for this. Um, you know, they, they take it very seriously, which is good, and it's awesome to work with people who are that passionate about the stuff that they've made. Um, so they would come back to us and say, no, 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 that statue was marble, not stone. You have to change the texture. Or like, no, that brick should be more red. It wasn't a, a, a brown one. And a very specific feedback to, to nail the level of detail they were going for. Wow, that sounds really intense, like, detail-wise. They really know their stuff, and they really were able to work with you they guys. Do. That's really cool. And they're passionate about it. The cool thing, too, is they, they're really excited because uh, I think the team, uh, the dev team, did a really good job of capturing that cinematic feel of fighting. Um, you know, one of the cool things about the Spartacus show and, and some of the other um, sort of over-the-top um, gladiator fighting games, uh, or the show at least, does a really good job of setting it up like a fighting game, right? So it's so cinematic. They do the slowdown effect, big blood, blood splatters and all that cool stuff. Uh, and the team 
nailed it, right? They replicated that almost exactly in the game. They even, you know, the game sort of knows when something really cool is about to happen, and it, it slows down and goes to this really cool camera angle and shows you the move that, that's going on. And uh, the first time the guys at Stars saw that, they were like, oh, my God, that's exactly how it looks in the show. How did you guys do that? It's amazing. See, that's awesome. It's probably really awesome just to hear uh, them have that kind of feedback. Like, well, it's awesome. I didn't, I didn't even think that. Sorry, awesome is like my word. I say it all the time. <laughs> but that's really cool. All right, we've got some winners from Facebook who they've shared the posts, and Siren has gone through and picked them. And we have two, uh, Priscilla Nunez. And Kevin Michael Harrell are our two winners from uh, Facebook. Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing our posts. And you have won yourself some Spartacus Legends t-shirts. What? what? <laughs> Those are awesome. Can I respond yeah. to something on the, uh, on, the, on the chat? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Someone asked why, why Sword and Shield is so bad. It's not bad. You gotta get better at it. Ooh. And if you don't know, one one of the cool things about Sword and Shield that you can't really do in other games is um, you can actually attack while blocking. So it oh. takes up a little bit of your defense meter, but if you hit an attack button while you're um, while you have the shield up and block, um, you're able to sort of poke in and sort of uh, you know turtle your way into the opponent's uh, into the opponent's attack. So see, that's awesome. I did not know that. And I'm actually That's watching the battle going on right now. It's really intense. I think they have, like, <laughs> dual daggers. Is that what they're doing? Yeah, because with the other styles, because they block with their actual weapons, mm -hmm. um, we don't allow you to attack out of that because then you would actually have to release the block button to, to use the, the, uh, the weapon. But with the sword and shield, we thought, you know, here be, here's a chance to do something really cool, allow a person to block and attack at the same time, um, which yeah. is something you don't really see in a fighting game ever. So... No, um, there's definitely, every style has their own unique um, quirks and uh, different things to sort of get them out of uh, bad situations. See, that's good. I like that. I like that a lot. So, Dave, how long did it take to develop this game? Uh, this game has taken about a year and a half to develop. Um, you know, I, I want to say it's been a fantastic year and a half, but it's been a very long and hard road. You know, um, I mean, there have certainly been some challenges, but, you know, the good thing is that we're all aiming to develop something that's fun. I mean, we want to create the best gameplay experience possible um, for everybody. So that year and a half really hasn't seemed like, you know, like that very much time. But, you know, it's still been a lot of work, so kudos to, you know, to everyone involved for getting it out there. Gotcha. Um... And I kind of want to know, I, I, kind of, I say kind of like it's not true. I do want to know, um, what is under the hood of this game? So what kind of language did you guys use to code the game? Is there a certain graphics engine or physics engine that is used? Um, and this is probably for, for David or Dave, but can you get technical and tell us some of the cool stuff behind this? In terms there? of specific, most of the game is coded in um, C++. Uh, gotcha. In terms of the... Um, the the engine that we're using, it's a very modified, heavily modified version of Fire Engine. Um, it's not that popular, but we've sort of done our own, you know, tweaks, tweaks and, um, you know, efficient, efficiencies to make it run, you know, for our specific games. Um, we also use Lua scripting, a bunch of, like, in-house tools, you know, for behavior graphs and um, uh, controlling animations, things like that. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the best way I can answer that one. And coffee. Lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> this game is run on coffee. <laughs> Very neat. Spectre, do you have a question that you wanted to ask? Um, I do. Um, so I know in this game there are microtransactions, and do they affect how successful your character will be? I knew somebody was going to ask <laughs> if it's paid. It had to be Spectre. Uh, yeah. So there are microtransactions, right? So it is a free-to-play game. Um, the cool thing about Spartacus is, ultimately, as a fighting game, it comes down to your skill, right? No matter how much money you spend in the game, if there's somebody can always outplay you if they're better, right? So you can't just sort of pay your way to victory. Um, what you can do is, and everything, uh, most of the things in the game you can earn over time by playing, right? So as you become more famous, you get access to this better gear and things like that over time. Um, 
what you can do is if you're like me and you don't have a ton of time to play, or if you're like Dave and you're not very good, uh, you can spend some money and do some microtransactions to, to skip ahead a little bit and sort of catch up to some of your friends maybe or, or be a little more competitive uh, if you're playing a lot of online matches. So um, it's up to you. There's no, uh, you know, everybody asks this, there's no energy. This isn't a Facebook game, right? It is free to play, but it's, yeah. uh, it's a skill-based game at the end of the day. Cool. And how does it work where you're matched up against other people? Are they your same skill level or, you know, because you don't, obviously, if you're just starting out and you only have access to a certain abilities and certain things, you don't want to be ma- ma- matched up with somebody who is, like, maxed out. Or does it matter? Is it really based on just your play style? So, uh, so the, there's two things there. So. If you are just really good, like we have one of the, the guys on our team here who can basically beat me no matter how much, or whatever I do, I could level up for a week and he'll just grab a new guy and just whip me soundly. Um, so that happens. But with the matchmaking right now, it's very open, right? So we're matching you uh, against basically anyone who's playing because everybody's sort of coming into the okay. game as a new player. Um, what we'll be doing is we'll be tightening that up over time. So we'll be making it more um, strict as who it's looking for. So we'll match you up more closely to people who are at your level, which will be important, right, as soon as, especially when people start gaining levels and there's a yeah. wider difference between people. Um, so we'll be doing that, uh, you know, in the next few weeks to, to make it a little more um, fair for the new player and, and, and give you better mm-hmm. fights so you can get really competitive. Um, the one thing worth mentioning, though, right, when we talk about the matchmaking stuff, um, all the play that you do is essentially a ranked fight. Right? So we, we like the idea of every time that you're playing online, it's just like the gladiator fights that David was talking about. You know, these are sort of the big games. They're a big deal, and, and fighting in these things is really cool. Um, so we don't let you, uh, in the game, you're not sort of choosing your opponent you're not, or anything like that. You're playing sort of in these ranked games. And what you'll see, uh, something that the team's working on right now, which is really cool, which we can't talk too much about, but um, the idea of, of entering into and playing in tournaments, which is awesome. It's something they're working on now, and, and oh, we're, uh, we're really cool. excited when we can bring that to you guys. It's really awesome, guys. That sounds super neat. neat. (laughs) That's great. We can hold tournaments, give away prizes. Yeah. I'm totally for that. That sounds fantastic. Oh, I like it. Um, So can we talk about game mechanics a little bit and and discuss, like, the different fight styles and things like that? Are you guys guys cool with that? Totally. Awesome. Actually, I I am just kidding. Uh, Before we do that, I do want to welcome everyone who's... Uh, watching. If you're just joining us, uh, this is Dolls and Devs on the Fragdoll channel. Um, I'm Saber. I'm here with Spectre from the Fragdoll team, and we are here with a number of people who are working on Spartacus Legends. It's a really awesome game that you guys can see in the middle of our screen. Um, so we're here with Katie, who is the player experience manager. Uh, we're also here with Josh, the producer of Spartacus Legends, and Dave and David, uh, developers of the game. Super awesome. We're super excited to have you guys here. Um, and now we're going to talk about game mechanics. <laughs> so, um, David, what are the different fight styles in this game? What can we expect? So we have um, eight different fight styles. Sword and Shield is the uh, one that everyone starts out with. And, you know, a nice, safe, um, if you guys play um, Street Fighter, that's like your Ryu. You, you know, we gave them all the tools necessary to win, um, but not overpowered. Um, yeah. Um, on, on top of that, we have um, Dual Swords. So sword and sword, that's sort of, um, we got a lot of inspiration from that from um, Spartacus, because that's tended to be what, what his style was in the show. Uh, we also have uh, two-handed sword. So if you're really into big swords, you go for that style. It does a lot more damage, um, has more reach than the other two sword styles. And then we have a two-handed trident, which is sort of our long-range weapon. Um, Spear and shield, so a, a variation on sort of the sword and shield style, but with more range. And I'm going through them all now. Dual daggers, which is uh, very much sort of um, the very fast style. So you, it's all about sort of getting in and getting out fast. Um, it's very easy to get caught, but at the same time, if, if you sort of you know put a lot of uh, stats into uh, attack speed and into damage, you can do a lot of you know really fast. Um, attacks on an opponent before they even know it. And two-handed hammer, um, which is one of my favorite styles. Um, slower, but also there's a big payoff when, when those hits connect. A lot of damage, by far the most damaging um, style in the game. And the last one is unarmed. You know, we, we debated a lot on how, how we're going to integrate that final style, but eventually we chose unarmed just because the show is very like hand-to-hand 
there's a very visceral feel to it. And um, we wanted to sort of keep that flair in it and also sort of do something different. So that style is sort of characterized by super weak damage, but at the same time, very, very fast and um, sort of an emphasis on pancreation, which is sort of this uh, attack type that we have in the game that is very physical, uses a lot of punches and kicks and headbutts as well, which I'm sure everyone loves to see. Oh, neat. And speaking of really epic fighting, um, in case you guys are watching the, the stream and you're wanting to know who is playing the gameplay that you're seeing on our on our channel right now, that is actually one of our Fragdal cadets. Her name is Rustling Rose, um, or at least her handle is, and she is doing work. I just beheaded someone? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that on the stream. Woo, that's crazy. But, uh, but she's doing an awesome job, so people in chat, if you're asking who that is, it's one of our awesome Fragdal cadets. And you should totally uh, follow her on Twitter and give her a thumbs up because she's doing a great job. Great job. Um, but to go back into the combat here, so David, can you explain um, some of the moves that you can do? Like what's rolling or what's juking? Um, and you can run and step in this game. What, what are those moves and what are, they, what are they used for mostly? So we have a lot of different mechanics in the game. Um, we, wanted to, we wanted to make it so that any player can jump in and sort of feel comfortable at any moment in time. So if, um, if you're a very safe player and you're just kind of learning, you know, we have that block button there. That's sort of your go-to button. Um, it's very easy to see when you're about to run out of block because of the defense meter. Um, that's sort of like the safest approach. But rolling is another mechanic that we put in there. And that's a little bit more... Uh, it's more of a, of a, of a wild card because at the end of a roll, you're left vulnerable. So if you don't time it properly, uh, you can be left open for a big attack. But at the same time, we give a player invincibility frames at the startup of a roll. So it allows you to you know, avoid a lot more attacks from the beginning um, and allow you to posi position yourself better. And stuff like juking is, um, is, very, is unique to specific styles. So like um, Dagger Dagger and Sword Sword, we wanted to make them feel more acrobatic, feel more um, mobile, and sort of able to get out of situations, uh, tough situations. Uh, and the, re the mechanic we decided on that was to allow them to cancel out of certain combos by pressing you know, either up or down on the control stick, and that will allow them to sort of juke to the side. Um, sim it works similar to like a roll in that it has invincibility frames, so it'll allow you to sort of um, not be hit by certain attacks, but it doesn't have the range that a roll does. Gotcha. All right, and well, that's awesome. And then did you want to talk about stepping and running too? I know you can do those things in the game. Is that dependent on the fight style or can everybody, all the gladiators do? Everyone can those step moves. and run. Um, in terms of running, that one we kept in there just because it's, uh, we didn't want, you know, it's a fighting game. We don't want people, you know, getting out of fighting, uh, out of a fighting distance for, for too long of a time. So we put that in there just to make sure that, you know, your opponent can always come at you with a very strong attack um, at any moment in time. So you always have to be careful about that. And for stepping, so that one is accomplished by um, flicking the, um, the left control stick in, a, in up, down, left, or right. And that'll sort of give you an easy in, easy out um, for, for most styles. But for um, two specific styles, unarmed and dagger dagger, uh, we were trying to make them more mobile. So if you flick um, left or back, um, instead of like the normal step that most gladiators have, they actually have a very big step forward. So it allows them to get in and out of a situation faster. Um, that's sort of the way we balanced um, we balanced them for fighting against you know sort of a trident or spear gladiator. Otherwise, they'd always be able to sort of poke you and keep you out of uh, fighting distance. Yeah, that's the worst when you're when you're at the mercy of someone with a distance or a ranged weapon, you know, and it's like <laughs> you just can't get in there. So that's good that you're able to combat that um, in terms of your movement. So can you also explain um, a light attack versus a strong attack? And I know you mentioned this earlier, and I don't want to mispronounce this. Pan pancration attack? Pancration, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, what are What are those things? So light attacks are your general go-to move. They're um, your weapon-based attack, and they're generally faster, but they also don't do as much damage. So usually you'll want to start a combo off with um, a light attack, and you know you know build into depending on your your gladi your style's um, command list, you'll want to build into a specific combo based off of that and the situation at that time. Um, 
the strong attacks is where the fun part sort of starts to get in there. You know, they're much uh, they're much more cinematic and acrobatic, and they can cause a lot lot more damage. Um, they tend to have a lot more range on them, but they also tend to be a little slower. So you have to pick and choose uh, when you're going to use a strong attack. And the last one we added in there was a pancreation attack. So this one's kind of unique to our game. Um, basically, like, like I mentioned earlier, the show is very you know, visceral, very brutal, and we wanted to maintain that. Um, so we, we kind of integrated this, um, this idea of pancreation, which is sort of this old um, fight style you know, during the Roman era, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where it was all very hand-to-hand, very close quarters combat. So we sort of took inspiration from that and created a whole set of moves for every style based off of that idea. So the the pancreation button will be sort of moves like punches, uh, kicks, headbutts, anything that's very elbows. We have those in there as well. Oh, anything that's just elbows, nice. <laughs> basically, very brutal attacks. Um, mechanically, the way they work in the game is that they're the only attacks that will damage the defense meter, whether you're blocking or not. So if you see that your opponent is about, is just at the edge of their defense and is about to be sent into the, um, the guard break state, um, if you put out a pancreation attack, you'll send them into that guard break state, which will, guard break state, which will allow you to combo on them, um, yeah, and make them feel bad about themselves. Oh, there you go, pro tip. Pro tip right there. <laughs> we got all the pro tips over here. <laughs> all the pro tips. And there are grabs in this game too, right? Yeah, we also have grabs in the game. Um, that's the best way to counter anyone who's blocking a lot. You grab them. Um, but grabs are also strong against pancreation attacks, so you don't want to be throwing out pancreation all the time. Um, so a lot of times a, a grab will take priority over a pancreation, so you got to be careful with those. Oh, nice. All right. Um, and there are different types of attacks, too, not in terms of light and strong, but um, in terms of like running and rolling attacks or charge attacks. Um, what are those things? So um, I was talking, I talked a little bit about it earlier. So in, you know, when I was talking about the uh, dagger dagger style, having the ability to step forward. Right. Um, basically, every, we, we try to give every style a unique flair, a unique um, ability that other styles don't have. So with the charge attacks, we gave those to the... Um, the two-handed style, so two-handed sword, two-handed uh, trident, and two-handed hammer. And those are achieved by pressing the light attack and the pancreation attack at the same time. And your gladiator will charge up when they do that, and you can release at, at not. We give you about a about a half a second time frame there to release the attack, sort of have your opponent guess when it's coming in. And if it connects, it does, you know, major, major damage and, you know, leaves your opponent in a very vulnerable state. So we wanted to keep that in there sort of to provide that extra extra layer of, of danger to worry about with those specific styles. Okay. Um, and you talked about this a little bit earlier, um, but in case our, some of the viewers are maybe uh, new to fighting games or they're just not aware of what these things are. Can you explain what the defense meter is and kind of how it works in the game and in the midst of battle, how you can use it to your advantage versus what you have to watch out for in terms of that meter? Things like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we, went, we went back and forth a lot with the defense meter. Um, initially, it used to be a stamina meter, so it functions a little bit more like um, you would see in a, in a sports game. Mm-hmm. So every move that you do, you know, would take up some defense um, and it would gradually come back over time. But, you know, we found that a lot of players... It's, it's not fun to have your attacks be be sort of monitored by this meter. So, but at the same time, from a, from a design standpoint, we can't have the player um, rolling around all the time, going unchecked. So we decided to turn it into a defense meter that would sort of um, basically gate the way a player is able to defend. So your defense meter will go down whenever you block attacks, whenever you roll or whenever you do a very uh, specific move to your style, like the charge attacks that we were talking about, that's mm-hmm. very strong but leaves you kind of open. Um, it's all those meter, all those um, usage of the defense meter will bring it down. Um, and if your defense meter gets to the gets to the broken state, which means um, you know, you're either blocking an attack and you get hit, or you get hit with the pancreation attack when it's completely empty, then you'll get thrown into a guard break state where um, the player is allowed to combo on you for about uh, three seconds and just do as much damage as they can within that period of time. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to give you, like, 
a 20 second break because <laughs> you've been yeah, talking a lot and I've been asking you tons of questions, which is awesome. But I want to just uh, talk to the viewers really quickly. If you want to win a Spartacus Legends t-shirt, which I know you do, um, all you have to do is retweet our Fragdoll tweets going out about our stream. Just retweet it and you'll be entered to win. I think we're giving away two more t-shirts um, at 6.30 Pacific time. So that's in what, seven minutes? You have seven minutes to retweet our tweets uh, and share the stream and make sure that you enter for your chance to win some Spartacus Legends t-shirts, which are awesome. And, yes, <laughs> get those shirts, exactly, exactly. So, um, going back to you, David, and asking you all these questions, um, <laughs> can you explain uh, the blocking and dodging and parrying portions of, of the gameplay and what their differences are and like kind of how you use them in battle? Um, yeah, so the, uh, the dodging... We took a lot of um, inspiration from Infinity Blade. I don't know if you guys have played that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we I sort of studied that a lot and sort of studied what they did. Um, even though that's not a fighting game, I know, so it seems kind of out of left field. But at the same time, you know, they have three main mechanics, which was, you know, block, dodge, and parry. And you sort of get to decide, you know, as a player, you know, what, what do you lean towards? So we sort of like that that um, that feel to it, where you know, you can, if you're really really good at the game, you can sort of go for a pairing style, um, you know, which has great rewards, but at the same time is a lot harder to do and it's more timing based. Um, the dodge in the game, which is um, it's it's uh, it's done by tapping um, R1 or right bumper on the on the controller. Um, that basically is, is, it gives you sort of a, a so a window where um, it'll allow you to dodge the incoming attack. It doesn't leave the opponent completely open, so all the time necessarily, but um, it will allow you to sort of get away from an incoming attack without having to block or without having to waste too much of your defense meter. And the last one was sort of like uh, was was blocking, which is just the safest approach if you don't have to want to have to worry about timing, if you don't want to have to worry about um, you know, guessing the right attack, uh, you just go ahead and block and, you know, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Neat. All right, so so what fighting style is your favorite? Well, they're all my babies, so I can't choose... <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I can't That's choose fair. any specific one. All right, well, okay, so David, you, you like all of them, and that's... <laughs> totally, totally fine. Dave, what about you? Do you have a favorite fight style? Because I know you're super kick-ass at this game. Yeah, you know what? Um, I really... God, my favorite fighting style, it would have to be Dagger Dagger. Um, you know, the good thing for me, and, you know, one of the things I, I can really appreciate about this game is that there's so many different permutations of, of items that you can add on to your Gladiator to, you know, to enhance the style. So... Dagger Dagger and Unarmed for me are, you know, the ones that feel like they're the fastest. So when I go through my item list, I'm always choosing things that will help speed up the, um, the attack speed or my weapon speed. So, you know, it's, it's hard for me to say. I mean, I, you know, on one hand, I really like the, uh, the visceral feel of going with unarmed combat. Um, on the other hand, for me, Dagger Dagger is um, one of those fighting saddles that really allows me to kind of dig in and, and customize it to the point where I feel like it's, you know, moving really fast and I can go ahead and, um, and really kind of sink in, especially against people with, uh, with double swords or um, with hammers. So, I mean, I would say it's a toss-up between the two, but I mean, I think just, you know, at a glance, with my, the way I play, Dagger Dagger would have to be my favorite. Awesome. I think that's actually um, a chat favorite, too. I saw a lot of people say Dagger Dagger and I think Hammer. Those were, like, two big ones for chat. But chat, I mean, if you guys are watching and you want to join in, what's your favorite fight style? Just put it in chat. Let us know. We'll take a, <laughs> take a quick poll. Um, Josh, what about you? What, what fight style do you usually play with? I really like the, uh, the two-handed sword. That's sort of my go-to in any RPG. All the RPGs I play, I, I go with the big guy with the big two-handed sword. Nice. So uh, I like that style. Nice. And then Katie, what about you? Uh, so my favorite would have to be the two-handed trident, and only because we had an internal tournament in our office, and no one could beat me with this style. <laughs> so everyone decided to make like an AK build, or so they called it like an anti-Katie build, and they all <laughs> built these specific builds to beat me with, and they, they were able to do it, but I, I definitely like the two-handed trident ever since. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. We're just kicking awesome. butt. 
<laughs> Very cool. So, David, um, what sort of combos can you perform in this game? Do you, are there combos that are specific to character or specific to fight style that we can uh, that you can perform in the game? So every style has a um, command list, which you can access um, in the start menu. And that'll sort of give you, you know, the different breakdown of all the different permutations in, the, in their combo list. Um, there's different moves. All of them uh, sort of chain into different things. Some of them are more pancreation based. Others might be more, uh, you know, strong attack based. So, it, and we also have um, critical hits in the game. So some of them um, lead into critical hits while others don't. It's really up to the player to sort of go in and, and see which one they need at a specific moment in time. You know, sometimes you might want to go for the safer one that comes out faster, but doesn't yield any uh, of the critical hit possibilities uh, or the damage possibilities. Um, so we have, you know, there's a lot of different, like, gameplay things to keep in mind when, when choosing your combo at any moment in time, um, which I think the community will hopefully discover as they, you know, start getting deeper into the game and, you know, we start really start sort of studying all the different styles. Awesome. And Dave, there's a question in chat for you, and I think this is the right one, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. So someone has asked, um, can anyone do hand-to-hand -hand combat style, or do you have to recruit a specific person or gladiator uh, who does that style? Uh, the great thing is that anybody can do um, you know, unarmed combat or hand-to-hand, -hand, even you. Yeah, even you guys. Um, <laughs> all you have to do is unequip the main weapon from your gladiator, and you should be good to go. Oh, sweet. I did not know that. It's, it's <laughs> that easy, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's a cool bet, right? The, the inevitable throwdown in any online fighting game is I could kick your ass so easily, I don't even need weapons to do it. So I love that you can actually do that in the game. <laughs> cool. So could you totally fake someone out? Like, could you have a weapon come into it and then start fighting and then pull, like, a Prince's Bride and be like, I'm actually left-handed, except you take the weapon away completely <laughs> and you just, like, destroy them with unarmed combat? That's a thing. No, we choose the fight styles beforehand, so you can't do that in oh, combat, okay. but we do have um, perks in the game, which if you're really, really into um, unarmed fighting style, you can actually get a perk that will buff that, so it'll, it'll allow you, you know, we know in place of having actual unarmed weapons, like we added that perk so that you can, you know, still play that style and still be, you know, a legit threat online, but... Um, but without, you know, without having to go through uh, the traditional path of progression for it. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, so we do have our Twitter winners from the last uh, shirt giveaway. So we have, we have three, if I'm not mistaken. So I will call those out real quick. Um, if your Twitter handle is Misfit336, you have won a Spartacus Legends t-shirt. There is also the Twitter handle Your Troll, which is funny. <laughs> uh, so you've also won a Spartacus Legends t-shirt and Leob? L-E-E-O-B. Leob. 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 I think that's how you say it. But you guys have won Spartacus Legends t-shirts. Congratulations. Uh, keep sharing the tweets and sharing the Facebook posts for your chance to win. Um, and uh, yeah. That, uh, we like giving away stuff, so the more you interact, the better. Yeah. And if you have any questions about Spartacus Legends, don't forget to put it in chat so we can ask uh, and get your questions answered. Hey, All right. Here's a question for you. Will you be playing Spartacus Legends tonight? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Talking about this, I totally want to play. And I already <laughs> downloaded it, so I, I just have to log in and, and play. So maybe we'll stream that later tonight. <laughs> I'll play this. <laughs> Awesome. Freaking awesome. I need to figure out what my favorite style is. I haven't played enough to figure out my favorite. It's probably going to be uh, dual swords. Probably. Um, but David, so let's... Um, or actually, I'm sorry. This is a question for Dave. Um, and this goes back into how this game ties into not just the show, but in, in just history in general. Uh, gladiatorial matches were a form of entertainment for the crowd, so... Does the crowd in the game have any effect on the battle? You know what? I'm really glad that you asked that question. Um, it actually does. I mean, the, the thing about the crowd meter is that, um, as you can see, well, when she gets in-game, um, so there's, right next to your, to your health meter, there's um, a, a meter that basically goes up as you keep fighting. And 
I think Dave can talk about the specifics, but the better you fight, the more that um, meter goes up. You can also taunt gladiators in game to, to get it up and running. But the whole thing is that you can drive the crowd into a frenzy when the meter is at its fullest, um, at its fullest state. And that allows you to basically um, do the special executions, and it also allows you to, uh, to slaughter opponents. Um, Dave, do you want to talk a little bit more about how we can get it to go up? Yeah, just like in the uh, in the show and in, in history, you know, it was the crowd that sort of gave me the the go ahead to actually kill the gladiators. So that's that's sort of the mechanic that we wanted to have in the game. And the way it goes up is by you know, as you attack your your opponent and you do damage, um, it'll continue to continuously go up. But the rate at which it goes up is different for every arena. So in a place like the pits, um, which everyone is totally lusting for blood and it's like they're all about seeing limbs come off, you know, it just takes two or three hits and that meter is going to be full immediately. Um, but in the ludus, which is the, uh, the place where the training yard basically where, where the gladiators go to train, um, it's very, very difficult to get the, uh, the crowd meter up to a state where, where you can be killed there. Now it does happen. It does happen in the show. Um, you can equip some boosts that will let you do that if, you, if you're really into killing people in the in the Ludus. Um, but at the same time, we wanted to make it kind of a challenge, kind of hard to get to that point. Oh, so that's neat. I like that. And um, Dave, I think this might be a question for you. How can you end a fight? Are, are there different types of endings that you can perform? Um, maybe some executions or, or certain things? Do you want to start again? Um, sure. Well, okay. Well, I'll start and Dave will, uh, will explain a little more in detail. But yes, there are, there are different ways that you can end a fight. One of them is if your crowd meter isn't up fully, then what you can do is, I mean, you'll defeat a gladiator, which means that, you know, they'll, they'll get in a state where they've essentially lost. If your crowd meter goes up and you don't have special um, executions, then you can chop off limbs, um, you can stab somebody through the, through the chest. So there are a couple of different options, but we also offer boosts that allow you to do um, specialized attacks. Uh, for instance, there's um, a face carver, one for the dagger dagger, one of my favorites, that allows you to basically slice somebody's face off. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Now, in case you guys <laughs> haven't found it yet, um, but for me, it's, you know, it's the more visceral executions like that that really make the game for me. Well, all right. <laughs> I'll have to play and see if I can come up with some of these things, although it sounds a little, whew, maybe I don't want to, but that's neat. <laughs> so what are, what's the inspiration for these different endings? How did you guys come up with them? Um, a lot of it, some of it's from the show, um, for, the, for the executions. A lot of them came from the show, but it was also a lot of internal sort of back and forth um, in terms of, you know, how... Like, like I sort of mentioned earlier in the stream, it was, you know, how can we top the show? <laughs> how can we go beyond what they did and sort of um, bring that visceral, brutal element into the, into the game? Sweet. <laughs> All right. And um, do you get any sort of awards or accolades after winning a fight? Uh, yes. After you win the fight, you can either get silver or you can get um, fame points. Now, the thing is, is that we offer different amounts of silver and fame points. Um, for all the different levels or districts in the game. Um, and we also actually in allow you to get increased fame for, for participating in online combat. So, you know, so if you feel like it's one of those things where you want to be able to increase your fame level a lot faster, then we really, um, you know, stress that, you know, this is an online game, so go ahead and fight against other people and you'll be able to, to gain those fame levels faster. Gotcha. Okay. And, um... There's a question from the chat that I believe, Dave, you'll be able to answer. Um, will all the executions be able to be purchased through silver in the game? So we do offer some executions that are available for, for silver, but there are also some, um, some other executions that are available for gold. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're, you know, and other than that, I mean, like I said, I mean, we, ha we do have um, the ability to slaughter. So, you know, if, if the specialized executions aren't your bag, you can still go ahead and with enough crowd meters, slice people's limbs off. Excellent. So, a really cool one with the two-handed <laughs> hammer, because instead of slicing off a limb, obviously it's a hammer. Uh, you break their leg and you get like a really like, floppy broken leg. It's totally <laughs> gruesome the first time you see it. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really cool. 
gosh, it's enough just to like play through all these weapons and just see the different executions and endings that you can get and breaking limbs and stuff. Oh man. All right. Yeah, I'm totally cool playing this later. <laughs> <laughs> the other cool thing, so uh, talking about executing a guy and how important the crowd is, um, mm -hmm. the perks that David were talking about earlier, the way that you earn those perks is when you do perform that, that execution or slaughter your opponent. And so those are the things that really make your gladiators unique and special. And so it's really important that you're sort of playing with the crowd in mind, right? So you want them on your side. You want them chanting for you and cheering you on so that when you pull off that awesome execution at the end of it, your gladiator is going to learn a new, new perk um, for doing it. Oh, geez. It's like a built-in incentive system almost. That's incredible. That's really cool. Um, so, oh, let me just make sure I'm reading the right stuff. Um, we did talk, you just mentioned perks. Um, what kind of perks are available in the game? And this might be a question for David. Yeah, we have a bunch of different types of perks. Um, uh, just off the top of my head, there's uh, ones that will just straight up buff your you know, health or your defense meter. Um, or even just your damage, just sort of a flat, like, here's plus 10. Then we also have some, like, really interesting ones in there. You know, we, we talked to a lot of the people on the team. It's like we, we all brainstormed and sort of came up with a bunch of different ideas. So one of the, like, the really, um, I think, weird ones in there is, um, I forget what it's called. I think it might be Curse of Janus, but it's like the crowd meter will flip if you do a throw. Oh. So you could be having the crowd meter completely on your side, but if, you know, at the very end of a match, um, if I do a throw on you, and you, before you're about to kill me, you know, all of a sudden the crowd is in my favor, and you can no longer kill me. So all of that, you know, that that all that work that you did to try and kill me, you know, I can sort of flip it around right at the very end. Crazy. So we, we try to add a lot of elements in there that that'll sort of you know keep people guessing. Um, you know, there's a potential there for a lot of different builds um, in terms of you know what perks will interact well with each other. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, what's the word, synergy there, synergy potential. So we expect a lot of, um, you know, builds to come out in the next few weeks and, you know, people finding, you know, overpowered uh, combinations. Sweet. Sweet. I like perks. I think that's cool. Adds a lot of depth to the game. Um, there is a question from chat, and I am so anti-spoilers. I don't want to ask it, but I guess, <laughs> I guess I will, and I think it's for Josh. Um, so, Josh... Uh, someone in chat has asked, does killing my gladiator's wife make him better? <laughs> That's an awesome question. I don't, so we don't have that in the game. That's either the, the best idea for a, a side quest mini game oh, or geez. the worst idea I've ever heard for a side quest mini game. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we've got a, a fan of the show in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Uh, that's for sure. So... David, can you upgrade your weapons or unlock better weapons um, as you progress throughout the game? Yeah, definitely. Um, the ability, the gear that you're able to buy is based off of your fame rank. Mm -hmm. So as that goes up, you'll get access to um, you know stronger weapons that you'll be able to purchase in the marketplace. Um, I alluded to a bit earlier in the stream, but um, you know we have a lot of different types of weapons in there. Some of them will buff your attack. Others will buff your ability to parry. Um, other, um, you know, your torso armor, uh, that gauges your ability to roll. So you can go for the heavy armor, which will make you roll, um, a lot slower, but it will give you big boosts to, um, health and defense meter. So on the, and on the opposite spectrum of that, you know, we have very light armor, uh, which will let you roll super fast, but you get none of those bonuses. So there's definitely a lot of room there for customizability and for players to, you know, sort of create their own experience. Excellent. And um, is there a leaderboard in the game? Like, can I tell that my gladiators are better than your gladiators, that are better than that person's gladiators? Actually, <laughs> we like do that. have leaderboards, and it's available for both the PS3 and the Xbox. Um, if you are, well, you can view the leaderboards after each of the matches. And, you know, that way you can see, you know, how many games you've lost, how many, you know, how many games uh, you've won. You can also see what your, um, you know, what else can you see in there? I always forget. The leaderboard is kills, wins, and losses. Gotcha. All right. Very cool. And um, I guess we're going we're gonna to go now into uh, not so much the, the fighting-specific 
portions, but Josh, if you want to explain to us a little bit about, and I'm, I don't want to mispronounce this, the Ludus or Lotus? Ludus. Right. Ludus. So, so the, and what is that? So the Ludus is sort of your, your training house, so your house of gladiators, right? So uh, again, the idea is that you are the Lenista, so you're overseeing this entire house of gladiators, and it's up to you to sort of recruit these guys. Oh, that's a nice way. You're buying slaves and training them and, and sort of developing them into these awesome uh, fighters and, and sort of rising through fame. Um, so your role is really sort of taking a step back and sort of managing your roster, right, of, of all these different gladiators. Um, you'll be going up against different kinds of uh, what we call Primus fights. So in the show, the Primus fights are these big sort of staged battles where you're fighting these specific setups like David was talking about earlier. Um, so some of those will require you to bring in guys who have a certain weapon style. And so it's really important that you sort of match that and you have got the right guys um, within your Ludus that you can bring in to the right fight. Um, the other thing that you'll be able to do is there's certainly sort of pros and cons of, of each fighting style depending on how you play. So, for example, if, uh, if you have a really good counter for the two-handed hammer by using a really fast dagger guy, you can sort of build that out and have that gladiator ready so that when you go up against a hammer uh, opponent, you can have sort of the right build for it. Um, and it gets interesting, too, when you're playing online, um, you obviously won't be able to know who you're fighting ahead of time because we do, uh, essentially, all our fights are basically ranked fights, so it's all random opponents that you're being matched against. Um, so, and that's the cool one. You can't really game it, right? So you can't uh, sort of exploit the style by, by counter sort of counterpicking your opponent. Uh, it's totally random on that one. So it's important that you have a, a decent amount of variation of guys that you've got built sort of in ways that you like to play them. Cool. And then what can you do, what sort of things can you do to upgrade or train your gladiators? So the biggest, so of course, as you become more famous, you're getting access to bigger and better weapons and armor, and obviously that's going to make them stronger. Um, also, uh, I think they talked about this a little bit earlier, but the, the idea of the different tiers of gladiators. So as you become more famous, you also get access to bigger, stronger gladiators that you can, or slaves that you can start with. Um, and uh, the perks then become really the, the defining point in customizing these guys. So um, by going through and executing your opponents and earning these perks, um, which uh, it's worth talking about. So in the Primus fights, you'll know which perk you're going to get if you can defeat the guy. But for every other match in the game, all the online matches and all the sort of random fights, um, it's, it's essentially a, a random drop, right? So you're going to get a random perk at the end of each one. You can choose to accept it or you can choose to decline it. Um, that's cool because uh, it's kind of like, you know, your talent tree, essentially, for your, for your guy in the sense that once you choose it, like, that's his perk, right? So he, he now oh. knows that. Um, we let you respecialize if you want to do that. But for all intents and purposes, the, sort of each gladiator has his very specific perks for him. Gotcha. And... Uh, so that's really how you're developing your guy. And, and there's, uh, you know, David was, was talking about earlier, there's so many perks. In the, I, I want to say hundreds. I don't know. I don't think I'm lying, but there's so many. Like, there's just tons of perks in the game. And so you as the player, like, I, the perks that I like to get are totally different from the perks that Katie will get because she has a different play style than I do. And I may have a different play style even for different gladiators, right? So my big two-handed sword guy, he's got tons of armor on. He's kind of slow, but he's pretty chunky. So I'm going to pick perks that maybe boost his health and defense and things like that. When I play dual daggers, I'm going to want to get perks that maybe make them faster, uh, weapon speed, uh, roll speed, that kind of thing. So it, it's, uh, I love the idea that, that you can sort of customize your gladiator to fit your play style is awesome. And so I think the perks do a really good job of that. Awesome. Um, and then, Katie, how many gladiators can you have at one time? So right now you can have eight gladiators at a time, but... I mean, a lot of them are going to die in the arena, so you'll be able to get more. Um, oh, none of them are going to last, basically, unless you bring them back. But, uh, yeah, so you could get eight at a time right now. Gotcha. And then um, I can play as my favorite gladiators from the show, right? So if you beat them in the fight, you can play as Onimaeus, Crixus, and Spartacus for now. But if you have a gladiator you want to play as that isn't in the game, you can always let us know on Facebook, Twitter, or the forums, and we'll definitely take that into account for future updates. Neat. Good to know. Um, and then, going back to... Oh, wait. Where I'm, I'm just getting a notification. Um... I guess people are asking a lot of questions, um, and if you guys have specific questions that we're not able to answer in today's stream, um, go on to the, the Spartacus Legends Facebook page, ask there, uh, go on the forums, um, the developers and the people working on the game, listen to the things that you guys are saying, 
Um, so if we're not able to get to it today, I, I apologize. Uh, but there are other avenues where you can ask your questions and get answers. Um, so don't worry. <laughs> there, are, there are tons of places where you can talk to these guys. Um, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, but Dave or, or David, um, what sort of armor can our gladiators wear, and how does all the gear affect the gladiators? Oh, I think you guys are muted. <laughs> I see you guys moving, but I just want to... All right, there we go. Yay! Hey. <laughs> um, so we have, I think, um, I don't remember, it's either four or five different slots, and the first one is um, helmets. So every gladiator can wear a helmet. Um, those, that tends to be more the... Uh, the wild card piece of, of equipment so we kind of put a lot of different things in there attack speed you know health um it's really up to the player sort of to uh, decide which one they want for that um then there's your uh weapon uh the weapons gauge your ability to parry so some weapons will not parry so well others will parry you know really well but you know there's a cost to uh the damage that they do um some styles can put a shield on, so they'll have different uh, different sh uh, types of shields to choose at that point. Uh, the heavier the shield, the more it takes a toll on your ability to move and your ability to roll. So you kind of want to make that decision. Uh, there's the torso armor, which I talked a little bit about earlier, which also affects your rolling ability. Um, but that gives you the biggest boost to health and defense. So if you go for the big, um, big heavy armor, you know, you'll also get a big health meter to go along with that. And the last piece is the uh, leg armor, and that dictates uh, your ability to dodge, how well you're able to dodge. So if you wear the light armor, you're able to dodge attacks really well. Basically, it gives you better footing, gives you more mobility. Um, but if you wear really heavy armor that sort of, you know, keeps you very grounded, um, your dodging ability goes down. So you won't be able to, to, do, to get out of those situations using that, using that mechanic very easily. Okay, and are there any restrictions um, from the type of weapons you use versus the type of armor that you wear? Or can you just mix and match as you want? You can mix and match whatever you want. Um, the only thing is non-shield styles can't wear a shield, obviously. So the, the you know dual sword style can't put a shield on because then right. you know, it would be a sword and shield style. Right. But other than that, you, know, you can mix and match um, helmet with you know, heavy armor with... Uh, light legs and you know see what you get awesome well good to know um and you you mentioned boost um and is that something different from from the armor that you're wearing uh, or is that just what the armor does it boosts certain parts of your character boost you want kind of boost yeah, so um, so there are certain uh, certain characteristics that are inherent in each of the armor pieces. Um, some of them affect your roll um, your roll speed. Some of them affect your weapon speed. But as for boosts themselves, there are items that you can attach to your gladiators that'll basically um, give them different abilities. For instance, there's one that increases the amount in which your fame increases. Um, there's another one that grants extra silver to um, to each of the matches that you play. So if there are some items that you you know wanted to purchase and you're not happy with, you know, with the amount of silver that you're um, that you're getting, especially for some of the earlier districts, then you can purchase different boosts that will basically give you even more silver to go ahead and buy ahead of time. Um, you know, there are also I mean my favorite ones are the fame level boosts simply because I really like. Um, you know, I like increasing all my, you know, my fame levels very quickly. I'm not very patient. So, you know, those are my favorites, but, you know, uh, it, it all depends on the type of player you are. There are also some that increase um, your, your attack damage. So, you know, go ahead and check them out. But, I mean, basically, you know, we offer a wide range of boosts that accommodate any level of game, game player. Great. Um, and then, Josh, how would you describe this game in one sentence? Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> I don't, so I don't think I can describe one sentence. There's a lot of stuff going on. I think the cool thing about it, right, is, is it's easy to get into, but I think the players will find once they spend some time with it, there's a lot of depth there, right? So it's a very approachable fighting game. I think if you're not amazing at the sort of hardcore kinds of fighting games, I think you might enjoy this. Uh, I, know, I know I do, and I'm not... Uh, 
I'm probably more like Dave. I'm not great at the, the more hardcore fighting games. Uh, but I actually like this. It's fun. I can get into it easily. And then I found that over time as I was playing, I started to get better. I started to learn combos. I started to pick up on some of the advanced moves. So, uh, you know, it's easy to pick up and play. And I think there's a lot of depth that's there for the people who get really into it. Awesome. And I don't know, can you guys... Oh, we're, we're in the middle. We're not in the middle of a fight. I was going to ask if you guys could uh, explain what the fight is. But once we get into another one, um, I might ask you guys to explain what's going on. If you guys both have the live stream pulled up and you're able to see the gameplay. Um, but in in terms of the game in general, who are we playing as? Like, what? who are we and who are our gladiators? Um, just to give a recap to our viewers, if you're just joining our uh, our live stream. Yeah, so you are, um, you know, you sort of play as yourself. You're the, the Lanisa overseeing your house of gladiators. Um, obviously, of course, all these different gladiators that you have, you get to fight as them when you take them into the fights. So that's, of course, the most fun part. But then when you're outside the fights and you're looking at the world map, you're sort of taking a step back and, and managing things since this is uh, your house. And, uh, and essentially, you are the person who's rising to fame. And you're using the gladiators to get you there. So the gladiators, and this sounds horrible to say out loud, but you're almost disposable, right? There's sort of things that you're using to acquire fame and become powerful. Uh, you know, history wasn't pretty, but uh, the, the game's very true to that, right? So your, your gladiators are almost consumable. They're things you're using, and they're going to die, and they're going to go away, and you're going to have to train new ones. Uh, and that's sort of how the, how the game was played. It was pretty brutal. Yeah, that sounds a little intense. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> So, Katie, it might tie into what Josh just said, but what is your goal or objective in this game? Yeah, so going into what Josh said, you have your own Ludus, your own house that you want to rise in fame. And I guess the objective would be to become the best house and defeat all the other gladiators from the other houses because you want to be the top Lanista. So. Gotcha. Um, and who, who are the bad guys, essentially, in this game? Who are we fighting against? So as bad as it sounds, I guess the other Lanista's slaves or their gladiators are the bad guys. <laughs> but um, you're just com competing against the other houses to make your house the best. Awesome. Um, and really quickly, we have about five minutes left of our stream. Um, so if you have any last minute questions, type them now. Also, share the stream, uh, retweet. Um, and actually, uh, if you want a chance to win some t-shirts and Spartacus Legends t-shirts, uh, be sure to have people, or <laughs> sorry, be sure to have you guys go to our Twitter and our Facebook page, uh, fragdolls.com slash Facebook, I mean facebook.com slash fragdolls, <laughs> and tell us what your favorite thing was from the stream, and we'll give prizes out on social media for that. Um, but yeah, now's your last chance to ask questions in chat, uh, but moving on with our questions, Josh, what is the overall tone of this game? It seems very... Uh, I don't know. Graphic. Brutal. It's pretty yeah. brutal. <laughs> yeah. It's. it's <laughs> we have a we have a lot of or I have a lot of very awkward presentations to executives trying to get what this <laughs> game is. Uh, there's some very colorful language in here. Uh, actually, <laughs> this is a funny story. So. Uh, we have this sort of war room that we're in, uh, that Katie and I are in now, which is when we launch the game, we have all of our monitoring set up, we're watching the, the servers and, and people playing the game and things like that. And uh, so we have this sort of list on the board of what our top priorities are and the feedback from the community and things. And, and our list of our high priority things is actually, we went out there at one point and just scribbled Jupiter's cock on it, and, like just an exclamation parts everywhere. And the president of the company walks in and the first thing he sees in the room, he looks right at it and he says, Jupiter's cock. cock. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> It's a great uh, but yeah, so the game, yeah, the game's it's it's brutal, it's it's bloody, it's violent, and it's really fun, and it's uh, it's a lot like the show. If you like the show, you'll love the game, and even if you haven't seen the show, the game is really fun. You should totally try it, and it's free. There's no reason not to try it. Exactly, it is free to play, so just download it now, give it a try. Um, it's a lot of fun. I know I'm going to be playing probably later tonight. No lie, I'm <laughs> talking about it so much. I so want to play. Um, there is a question from chat, and Josh, I think this is for you, um, and I don't, I don't know if I'm saying the whole question or not, but um, are you going to reset the stats in the future? Yeah, because he says that he's so, already finished the game two times, and he just wants to know if he should keep playing. So yeah, I should totally keep playing. We're not going to reset the stats. So everything that you're doing, uh, you know, the game is, is officially fully released. Um, everything you do will be saved. Uh, we're even going uh, above and beyond to make sure that the progress you're making is saved. So even if 
your console went away or your hard drive failed or your save got deleted, we're actually backing up all your saves on our servers so that you will never lose your progress, right? So we're, we're keeping awesome. track of all that stuff. Awesome. Sweet. And Josh, what makes this game different from other fighting games? What are some of the unique things that we can find in this that makes it so different from, from some of the other fighting games out there? Uh, so I think the, the approachableness is huge, right? Like the, the very, sort of the core fighting games are, are hard. And they're hard on purpose, right? And there's certainly an audience of, of people who are really good at them, but it takes a lot of effort to sort of master them and be competitive. Um, the thing that I really love and I keep coming back to with Spartacus is it's easy, right, to pick up and play. And then it's also really deep. So at, over time, like the things that moves that David was talking about, you know, the sort of things like parrying and evading, like, I could not pull those off early on, but I could still get in the game and have fun, and, and it looks really cool. I don't have to know, like, this 10-button combo to look cool. Like, the fighting just looks awesome start. Um, but then as I got better and played it more, I started to learn some of these cool things and dodging. And, and um, the, the, what I think makes it the best is the online play, right? Playing against AI bots is fun. It's a great way to learn, and there's a cool arc that you can play through. But really, I think the place to be is online, and playing against other people is so much fun. We've had so many matches here. You know, we've got, a, a, of course, a TV in the room. We've been playing with all the people uh, since we released. And it's, there's some intense swearing and very heated online matches from some very, uh, you know, buttoned-up executives within the company who are in here swearing at people online in the online matches. It's a lot of fun, and I, I think getting people online is going to be really cool. And especially when we start rolling out some of the new features and new content that the team's working on right now, um, you know, getting things like the tournaments and some of the other really cool stuff that we can't wait to tell you about. And we'll, we'll be talking more about it soon. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff now. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming. And uh, it's, it's pretty fun. Awesome. Sweet. Well, I think we're pretty much at the end of our live stream. Um, thank you guys so, so much for taking the time to speak with us. Is there any last uh, final words you guys want to say about the game? Anything we didn't cover that you guys wanted to cover now uh, before we sign off? Yeah, go download it. <laughs> <laughs> for free. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then, guys, in chat, if we didn't get to your question, we apologize, but there are plenty of ways you can reach out to the developers um, and have your questions answered later on. There's the forums, there's the Facebook page for Spartacus Legends, things like that. Um, so be sure to ask your questions on there as well. If you want a t-shirt from us, we will be in contact with you guys about where we can send that t-shirt off to. We'll be giving away some final t-shirts in via social media after the stream is done, so be sure to keep sharing and talk about Spartacus Legends, uh, and you might get your chance to win. Um, and stay tuned, we'll have a community game develop, or community game develop, community game night uh, right after this, so just stay tuned, uh, give us a couple minutes to reset. And I think that's it, thank you guys so much. It's been thank awesome. You, you guys you. are great, yeah. thank you guys. And we'll yeah. see you guys later. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.